Hello, hello, and welcome back to Cars of Glasgow. You join me with Matt today. Hello. Inside his Volvo VX220, and today we're going to be talking about his ownership experience, kind of why he bought it, and what it's like to live with. So without further ado, I'll pass it over to Matt. Hello, hello, and uh, this is Igor, my uh, VX220 mascot. So he's just kind of chilling in the background there. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anybody wondering, we yeah, be friends here today. Well, that's, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so we'll start off. Um, we're inside your very yellow VX220, yep. lovely stalling shirt today. Uh, so what was, your, what was your first thought process when you were going to buy or look for a car with a VX220? So I thought, I really liked the shape, really, really liked the shape of it. Um, always have done, I remember looking at them and being like, I just really like the look of them, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're sort of different. Um, honestly, I always wanted an Elise. Um, the Elise was the car for me that, you know, I really, really fancied. Um, I was staying in Aberdeen at the time. I was working there driving articulated dump trucks and I saved up my money and I was like, do you know what, I'm going to treat myself and buy myself something nice. And um, I spotted an Elise in Aberdeen, a silver one, uh, and I went to test drive it. And unfortunately the car was, to me, a letdown. Um, it wasn't the car's fault in particular, it was more the way the car had been looked after. It had really not been looked after well, um, and it led to a really awful drive. It's very bare service history. Um, there was cracks in the fiberglass everywhere, um, and I was really sort of disheartened, and I couldn't get another Elise to look at in Aberdeen. So um, I waited for about a year. And I thought, well, you know, let's let's look at the VX220 and see, you know, we'll, we'll get like the kind of, you know, what is DNA there, and um, still be able to, you know, have a fun driving car, etc. Even if it's not an Elise, and I checked the VX220 out, and um, yeah, it was like I really it brought back the look to me, and I thought okay. it just reminded me a lot of how much I liked them, mm -hmm. and um, I started sort of, you know, scouring the internet and trying to find um, cars, and I came across a trusted dealership down south in Wakefield called John Seal and he was the guy that everyone was saying you know if you're going to buy a Lotus or you're going to buy a VX you know he's the guy to buy off of he just they're good cars you know you won't have any issues um, and I looked at his website for ages and I really wanted a yellow one okay. had to be yellow I just don't know why I just really wanted a yellow one and then um, one popped up and I thought okay great like this is this is great so I remember I was off that day and I, I phoned up and I was like, do you still have it? And they were like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, deposit, I want to place deposit on it. So I hadn't seen it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm to totally going blind here, but with everyone, you know, saying how good he was, like I was determined it would be fine. So I placed the deposit um, and then I paid the remainder um, a little bit after and the car was brought up on a trailer from Wakefield. Okay. So I'd asked John, you know, can I have a hard top with it? Um, he fitted a hard top for me, which is currently back at the house. Um, and I wanted it to add sort of turbo spoiler on the back as well um, and paint that kind of gloss pack to match the wheels and then he brought it up in a transporter um, and not him himself but he paid for a transport company and they brought it up right. and it was delivered and then that was in 2016 um, and they were in 2023 and they're still enjoying and it they're still <laughs> enjoying it it's been quite a, a ride but yeah we're still enjoying it so that was the kind of story behind it yeah. okay. and how many miles have you done then since Ooh, owning it in 2016? That's a super good question. Um, I actually daily drived it for a little bit um, and it was, I probably put a few thousand miles on it when I was doing that. It was just okay. for, it was for a few months and, um, you know, I was just really short trips back and forth to work, um, you know, and I was not about maybe five miles, ten miles from work, something like that. And I was just mm. kind of driving backwards and forwards. Um, until I got another car uh, to drive daily and over the time I don't know I can't remember what I bought it with I think okay. I, think I bought it with 58,000 I think right. something in that region and it's now on 72 I okay. believe so it, it doesn't really get driven massively like I'm lucky sometimes if I even put you know, fifteen hundred miles on it. Like, um, mm -hmm. sometimes it just sits. And it's a shame. <laughs> it really is. But I need, I need to drive it more. Yeah, yeah I need to drive it more for sure. Okay, so maybe I'll tell everybody what's your favourite experience, favourite story with the car, and since you've had it. Absolutely. So, um, I, I bought the car, and uh, in twenty sixteen, I bought the car, mm -hmm. and um, it was the same year that I met my fiance, and we. Basically, it was our first date, you know, we'd been talking, we'd arranged to, to meet up in Stirling. So, um, at the time, um, our real home address was in Lanark, and although I was working in Aberdeen, 
and living in a tiny little dingy caravan in Aberdeen, that's where it was. But right. um, my home address was in Lanark, so the car was there, and I thought, you know, I'll, we'll go on a date. Like, you know, we arranged the day in Stirling, and um, I thought, you know, I'll go and pick her up in the VX. And yeah. she'd seen photos and she liked it, and I thought, okay, like, we'll pick her up in the VX. And um, I was coming onto the motorway, so I was coming from Airdrie direction onto the motorway, mm -hmm. and um, the car was struggling. So I was pulling out of some junctions, and the car was struggling in first and second gear. And I was like, oh, this isn't right. Like, naturally, it has quite a clunky gear change. Yeah. Um, but I thought, this isn't, you know, something wrong here. And I remember pulling out onto the, the roundabout, like, ready to join the motorway at uh, kind of Airdrie direction, and um, I bumped into first, and it wouldn't go. And I was like, uh oh. And then at the second, wouldn't go. I was like, oh no, no, no. And then I managed to get third, but obviously it was, you know, I was trying to rev it to get it to move because it was third gear. And then um, next minute there was a plume of smoke just puffed out the back um, at the, the rear vents. And that was it. The engine management light on and oh. then it, it died. And I was sitting at the side of the, the motorway. I managed, sorry, the side of the, the roundabout for the motorway. And I managed to pull it right in. People were beeping, people were waving. Like, you know, I was like, oh, sitting there like this. And then... Um, yeah, what had happened was the gearbox had just died. I, d I don't really know the feelings and outs of it, um, but the clutch had gone as well. Everything had just gave in. Okay. And um, I phoned John C. and I was like, help. Like, you know, I've had the car, I think I'd only had the car maybe a month or so, and he was like, you've had that car a month. He says, um, if you can get it back down to us, then, you know, we'll, we'll sort it yeah, yeah. under warranty for you. So I was like, cool. So at the time, I just thought it was a clutch that had gone because um, of a really strong smell of clutch. Um, I never realised it was the actual box I, I really didn't know what was going on to be fair like but i did suspect the clutch and um he uh, i was part of the AA at the time and full relay they took the car down and they actually abandoned the car at a service station uh, with put the keys on the wheel right and they left the car and um the car was meant to arrive you know within the week and it, it was taking a lot longer and i phoned the AA and i was like where's my car and they were like, it's at a service station, you know, um, just south, I can't even remember where it was, like, south of some town in England. Um, but don't worry, because the keys are with the car, and another driver's going to pick the car up and take the car onto Wakefield. And I was like, what do you mean the keys are with the car? Oh, we put them on the tyre, you know, it's fine, it's sitting under a camera, it'll be okay. And I was, like, so nervous, like, sitting there going, oh, no, like, yeah. someone's going to steal it. Like, they'll just, but it was fine, like, the car got down, John fixed it under warranty, um, we went to Wakefield to pick the car up, drove mm -hmm. it back home, and it was totally fine. Um, yeah, so uh, probably another story was at the recent Concarden performance show, recent, it was last year, I think it was, okay. um, and the cars were all sitting in a line just waiting to go in, and um, the cars were, you know, just, we waited maybe for about half an hour, so there was a bit of a block at one end, and they were trying to get everyone parked, everyone through as, you know, the norm with car shows. Yeah. And um, <laughs> basically, I was too busy looking around, admiring everyone's car and being like, oh, that's nice, that's nice. And I never noticed that my temperature gauge was slowly climbing and because it's okay. a stack, um, it's all digital, you know, below. Um, so I never realized that the temperature was shooting through the roof. Right. And with these, there's an electric fan comes on at the front. Um, I think it's usually about 105 or 107 degrees. I can't quite remember it's in that region um, that the, the fan comes on and sort of starts to kill the car. Now I hadn't noticed there was a roasting hot day, it was boiling, and um, we got into, it was a big bit of grass, you know, and we went, we were, they were parking us up, and next minute the car was just, again, smoking out the back, <laughs> and I was like, no, like, what's this? And then um, I remember looking at the temperature gauge, and it was sitting really high, I can't quite remember the number, but it was sitting, it was that moment of like, oh, no, heart stop. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that pit of your stomach kind of feeling. Um, the feeling you kind of almost get when you lose your phone, like it was that, yeah. and I was like, oh no. So I jumped out of the car, um, and I said to my fiance, it was like, quick, get out, get out. Because um, there was just smoke coming out the back, or what looked like smoke. Um, and I opened the back, and I just left it, um, as I realized that it over, obviously overboiled. Mm -hmm. um, and there was, you know, fluid running down, and people were gathered around the car. You know, some people trying to help, some people just kind of like, mm, like not so good. Like, um, and there was people giving me water and stuff, but I just let the car cool down, you know, because of you don't, obviously don't take the, the cap yeah. off and it's overboiled. So I let the car cool. Um, it brought the engine management light and all that one. I was like, oh god, no. Um, and basically, I left it for the day. It was always in my head for the full day. And we drove home, 
uh, took it really easy on the motor when we drove home and uh, I got back and what had actually happened was it was a single fan at the front okay. on the radiator and the bolts had rusted through and the fan was just kind of resting on the crash box which had oh, obviously yeah. seized it, it was you know not moving and it just overboiled so I had to go in um, to uh, a guy from Edinburgh called Craig Moncrief who kind of specialises in all these cars um, he fitted a full aluminium radiator for me and um, a twin fan cooling kit and yeah. Yeah, I mean it's 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 super cool now. There's no yeah. issues, so it's it's totally pardon fine. the pun, super cool. Yeah, yeah super cool. <laughs> pardon the pun. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. So that that's kind of really been it. I mean, a couple of issues with the light switches. Mm -hmm. Um, these are made of chocolate or what appear to be chocolate. So, okay. They are. Happy's a form. <laughs> yeah, excellent, absolutely. And it's like I think they're old sort of vector switches. I believe right, okay. um, there's on them and. Um, I remember we were in Aberdeen, we just went for a drive one day and we went up to Aberdeen and they uh, stayed in the caravan and we were going through city centre and I drive about with my lights on in this because people, even though it's bright yellow, people still don't see you. So with trucks and cars and stuff, no one can see you. So um, I usually run about with my lights on and I'm um, just hoping that someone will, of course, see you with, with the addition <laughs> of the lights. <laughs> yeah. um, and I uh, put the lights on and jumped out of the car and I was like, mm, went to put the lights off and they wouldn't turn off and I was like, oh no. And then um, the light switch, the back, and it's really free at the back. So there's actually a new light switch kit you can get, um, which is a lot better. I'm going to change to that eventually. Okay. Um, but the light switch back in the spring and all that had cracked at the back, and the little support at the back of the switch had broken, um, and it wouldn't turn off. So the only option was to open the front. Uh, where the fuse box sits, right. uh, find the one that was for the lights and then just pull the fuse for the light switch, or er, for okay. the lights, sorry, to turn the lights on and off and that was what I had to do until I got a replacement switch from eBay, okay. uh, which is also starting to fail. So yeah, I'm going to, need to go down the route of a better yeah. light switch. Um, but I think mostly, other than that, um, touch wood, um, that's been about it, okay. the sort of mechanical side of life. There's been nothing really else that's been, you know, different or anything okay. that's kind of... So we've had a little bit of your experience of engines blown up and that, so yep. let's migrate into insurance then. So the realm of insurance for a VX220, what's that like in Glasgow? In Glasgow? In Britain? It, <laughs> so it is quite a tricky thing, i found. Um, so I bought this car when I was about 24, Okay. so something like that, and insurance was extortionate, um, but I limited it to mileage, so I was like, you know, I'm not going to do any more than 3,000 miles in the car. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of what I capped myself at, and that's what I stuck to. Um, the car at the time um, only had, you know, a lip spoiler at the back from the yeah. turbo. Um, there was no other modifications done. I obviously declared it has a KN filter on the side um, as well. And anything else I thought, you know, was a modification, which was very little. Yeah. Um, and um, that never really made it budge much. It was pretty fine. Um, and then I found that um, insurance companies will insure you, but they really don't know what it is sometimes. Okay. So um, I had a crack on the windscreen. And of course I had um, excess. Yeah, it really attracts bees. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and wasps. Yeah, you do get them flying at you. Um, so I had a chip on the windscreen and um, I have my excess, you know, all that for the windscreen. It's all included in insurance. So. I paid the excess, um, the crack was go growing more, and um, basically trying to get the insurance company. So, to understand what has to happen with this car in a, a, you know, a windscreen claim. So, the front, there's basically this car has two clam sections um, the front clam and the rear clam. Um, so, the front clam comes fully off, and the rear clam comes fully off too. Right, okay. And it's all fiberglass. Um, so, the front clam sort of lifts away, you've got like the crash box and the radiator, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and it's the only way that you can really get into the windscreen um, is through the uh, the front clam being off. Um, or sometimes what they do is they maybe move the front clam forwards and then yeah. get into the bolts and do it that way. So the full windscreen needs to come out, uh, which means the full windscreen surround. So everything, all of this has to, to lift off really. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's, you know, like an exige, so I guess, to, I believe, Elise windscreen that, that just goes in its place. Um, so trying to get the trying to un, or make the insurance company understand that you know all of this has to happen yeah this was so difficult they couldn't understand the full front section of the car has to be removed for the windscreen to go out and back in again yeah um and getting them to, to do it through a garage because the garage had to do it i couldn't do it um and it was really difficult so 
Um, it's worth, I suppose, bearing in mind if you need a new windscreen that this is a potential, you know, you yeah. may have to go to and fro if you're an insurance company. Um, I think the recent issue I've found is that not all insurance companies want to insure the car um, purely because I think it could be the fiberglass element. I got told a lot of times we don't insure that car or mm -hmm. you might need to go through a classic car insurance. Um, and I know there's a few people, a few other owners that have struggled to, you know, okay. with, with um, insurance as well. Um, I was lucky I found a company that was willing to take me on, but I had to do a lot of shopping around and a lot of, I was getting crazy quotes um, for tiny mileage, <laughs> so like crazy quotes um, and very little modifications on the car. Um, but I eventually found somewhere that was decent and I was like, okay. thank God. Um, but yeah, insurance can be a bit, a bit of a nightmare now, especially okay. for the turbo models, I think, as well, and the VX R220 and all that. And yeah, it can be pretty brutal. Okay. Yeah. I feel um, like it's an eighth year again. Yeah, wow. She's, She's not didn't. learned. Oh, that's a, everybody was <sighs> curious. She sold me other on doing exterior shots and she went back again and then she's came back the third yeah, time. Yeah, third time. She's an absolute nightmare. She just soaked us. Yeah, like. I'll, I'll put the camera <laughs> yeah, this is go. This is the experience we've got through cars all covered. It's then. all covered. We'll do a windscreen light. There we are. <laughs> there we <go>. Singular. <laughs> so we may as well end on a positive. Yes. Um, so yes. you've owned the car seven years roughly. Mm -hmm. So, um, what is it like to drive daily? What's it like just to live with? Anybody who's maybe curious, what is this? Maybe if people in America yeah. are like, yeah. such a unique, cool car. Absolutely. What's it like? Uh, yeah, it gets a lot of attention, I've noticed. So Because of the paint? Yeah, because of the paint and I think because of the shape. Um, a lot of people mistake it for more exotic cars, I've noticed. You right, do okay. get a lot of strange comments. Um, I've had everything from, oh look, there's an MR2, or to, oh look, look at that Ferrari. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get this really bizarre, like, some people just see it very differently. Like, nobody's I'd... saying look at that Vauxhall. Yeah, nobody says <laughs> look at that Vauxhall. Like, yeah, it's, it's so different. Like, yeah, um, you do have to try and explain to people, like, you know, what what it is, and it's at a time, you know, where, you know, Vauxhall and Lotus had that sort of partnership, yeah. you know, um, and a lot of people do say, oh, nice Lotus, you know, but it's not, like, it is and it isn't, like, it doesn't have the Lotus badge, and it doesn't have, it may have the DNA, but it's, yeah. from Vauxhall obviously but or Opel Speedster in Europe yeah um but it does get a lot of attention you get people taking pictures with it when you leave it and I found like in streets and stuff like okay. people will come back and people will be taking photos with it um some people just come over and talk to you um petrol stations and want to know more about it you'll have people making guesses as to what it is um yeah you get so much like attention and, and it's all positive I've never had anything bad Everybody's been so nice, um, and even people want to sit in it and get a yeah. photo, you know, that's pretty cool. So, 100%. Um, yeah. Okay, so driving experience, um, yep. obviously, being a car journalist, you get to drive a lot of cars. Yes. Um, yep. So, may as well tell us a little bit about what it's like to drive the VX220, yep. maybe anything you can compare it to, so somebody can... Absolutely, like... Because, um, the... like, that Enzo you drove last week and that MC20 you drove the, yeah. day, the day before, so anybody <laughs> drove those multi million pound cars, it's yeah. just like that. A hundred percent, exactly, exactly. Like, no, but yeah. A hundred percent. I think the driving experience is, is phenomenal, like... And um, and it's standard form even you know you you get like really well balanced car um, it's rear wheel drive, and there's just enough power you know I mean I think not to sixties the claim is under six seconds right. um, which I would believe, um, and you've got a pretty you know decent top speed as well if you're on track and you need it um, it's it's got plenty of mid range punch it's quite a torquey okay. engine, um, and it's through the corners you know you can you, you just have so much confidence the tires are super grippy um it's pilot sports i've got in this and the tires are just fantastic bilstein suspension is standard um and it's just really really nimble it's really good um i installed a two and a half inch exhaust on the back and okay. um, there's a an exhaust called the vse which is the Vauxhall sports exhaust um that came as an optional extra um from the factory and they are pretty much like hen's teeth, you know, they are super rare and usually if you get them they're in, they've got, you know, they're rusted through, they've got holes in them and all that and they're so hard to get now. Um, so I went to a company um, in Fife and I says, this is the kind of exhaust I want, you know, can you fabricate one? Yeah. They'd never done one for a, a VX or a Lotus or anything before and uh, they were like, yeah, we'll give it a go. So yeah. like they did it, it was fantastic and um, they fitted it and, you know, you get nice burbles and you get nice, it makes a really nice soundtrack. And it makes the driving experience just so much more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. 
It really is. I mean, you've got the roof off and you're just battering through some of, you know, Scotland's finest roads or, you know, like if you travel down south as well and you hit some of the roads there that are so nice and then it just brings the car alive. Like, yeah. and you just get this really, and you walk out of it and you're just like, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. And you just, you know, you've, you've spent your money well, like when you walk out with a big smile on your face, because <laughs> driving some of these like expensive cars, like, I, you know, I get, I'm so lucky I get to drive like a lot of cars, usually I get them for a week and I'll mm -hmm. test them for a week. Um, and some you walk away and you know they cost like three times as much as this and you walk away and you're just like that was a bit meh like and then you know you, you get there sometimes and you get like a really good car and you're like oh that was great like you know but it's I can't really compare the driving experience um, to anything that I've ever really driven okay um, nothing that kind of stands out I suppose the Elise that I drove when I was looking at them wasn't in great nick um, so I mean yeah, I don't it's know. Really yeah. Its own class. It, it kind of feels like that. Yeah, yeah, it does. I've never driven an MR2 or anything like that, um, so I wouldn't know how that kind of compares. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it does. It feels it feels fantastic to drive. Yeah. It really does. And yeah. I think with the more upgrades you throw at it, like um, you know, supercharger, um, maybe night, you know, better suspension. I mean, Bilstein suspension on this is fantastic. But a lot of people do an upgrade to maybe Nitrons mm -hmm. um, for fast road or something. And you know, everything you kind of do as long as you get the geometry and stuff right, like yeah. you, you can be a well set up, really great car. Um, so yeah, that's I would sure. say that's yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, everybody, thank you so much for staying tuned for this ownership video from Matt on his GX220. Um, if you've got any questions, please comment below, and we'll pass it along to Matt. And he can answer directly. Uh, check out his journalism page. I'll put all that information below in the video uh, or in the description even. <laughs> Thank you so uh, much. Thank yeah, you. of course. Um, any last final thoughts for anybody watching? Um, yeah, so uh, I think if you're looking to buy one, um, it's like everything. You just have to do your homework um, and make sure you get something, you know, that's, that's not being crashed or, you know, all of that sort of stuff. There is yeah. a lot of category cars out there. A lot of them have been binned. Um, and I suppose as long as you buy off of someone that's, you know, like decent, like someone that's got a reputable, um, you know, thing for VXs and Lotuses yeah. behind them, then you'll be fine. Um, you just have to check service history. These are chain driven as well, mm -hmm. um, and the timing chain is known to bow out. Like it okay. us usually, sort of later on, that I sort of I think closer to sort of seventy, eighty thousand miles. So you just okay. want to check for anything like that, um, and. I mean, fiberglass, you can get new clams front and rear for them, yeah. you know, that sort of stuff. But other than that, just get in it, enjoy it, and drive it. That's what it wants. Yeah. So, yeah, Amazing. just enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on today's <laughs> thank video. You, thank you for having yeah. me. I really enjoyed it. Thank yeah, you so yeah. much. And thank you for watching. As always, stay safe, and I'll see you next video. Thank you. Ciao.